I can't believe I'm about to give away one of my biggest vinyl secrets. You know what? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because we, we being the friends of this channel, are one all-inclusive community. And it doesn't even just start and stop with vinyl, even though that's what I talk about. I'm talking about all music lovers. So there's no secrets. So here it is. My thoughts about Japanese vinyl and why you might want to get into it, including some tips and tricks to make it a little less painful. Japanese vinyl is a huge subject, and I'm not going to cover every nuance between Japanese pressings versus pressings from other regions, but I do want to cover some of the most common reasons why vinyl enthusiasts, some vinyl enthusiasts, love Japanese pressings. And I also want to discuss how Japanese pressings can be different from their US counterparts. Then for the second half of this video, we have a baker's dozen worth of Japanese pressings from my collection. So stick around for that because there's some really great, great pressings there that you might want to add to your collection. So I have pressings from all over the world, US, UK, Japan, Netherlands, Canada, etc. But by and large, my collection contains US pressings but Japan by far is in the second position. So why would you want to add some Japanese pressings to your collection? There are two factors to keep in mind while I'm talking about Japanese pressings. There are Japanese pressings and there are Japanese pressings purchased from Japan. The latter adds the additional variable of shipping cost and shipping time for those that don't live in Japan. And I'll get into that. So, okay, let's jump right in. So what about the cost? Some would say, probably many would say, that cost is one of the biggest deterrents when considering Japanese vinyl. So here's the thing, I don't find that the Japanese vinyl that I buy, mostly jazz, is really any more expensive than the equivalent US pressings. The records I'm gonna show you in the second half of this video were all comparable to the US pressings in price, and in some cases, much cheaper. Although I would say this, purchasing Japanese pressings in the US comes at a premium. So here's my first tip. Buy in quantity. I'm always buying in quantity. Shipping for the first record will always be the most cost prohibitive, right? But if you put together a little lot, you can begin to tip the scales back into your favor, oftentimes offsetting the cost enough that you're actually paying less than you would be buying the same record in the US or domestically. Or as I said, even less than the US counterpart to that record. I, I can already hear people in the comments section. Buy domestically, support your local record stores. Of course, of course I do. I buy records from a lot of sources. At the end of the day, I'm the one that has to answer to my spouse about my bank account, so you know. Number two, shipping from Japan without fail, and I have a lot of experience buying records from Japan, is lightning fast. Granted, I live in a very advantageous part of the US when it comes to this. I live on the West Coast, but records are at my doorstep, I'm not kidding you, within two to three days. Two to three days after making my purchase. I'm gonna try to show you some footage right here while I'm talking. Two to three days. I can show you two recent examples. And it's every single time. The first time I bought records from Japan, I was shocked because I would always talk myself out of it. But once I received my record, I, I couldn't believe it. It's like I ordered the records and then I turned around and there they were, it was, it was crazy. Dramatically faster than even buying domestically. Why is that important? Well, I mean, it's important to me because the longer my records are in transit, the more opportunities there are for damage, warping, and, and all of that stuff, getting lost. You know, when I order from Japan, it's like, boom, it's here in two days. So your mileage will obviously vary there, but I'd be curious to know what part of the world you're in have you purchased records from Japan? How long did they take to get to you? Let us know in the comments. So pricing is one strike against buying Japanese vinyl, although I don't really see it that way as I've already mentioned. Another potential deterrent, in my mind at least, is that some people say Japanese vinyl is cut quieter. Uh, maybe, but I really don't see that as a con. Without getting too technical, there's a lot of information that goes into a vinyl record groove. And the louder the amplitude, the wider the groove. Therefore, the more you either have to squash dynamics or the more opportunity for inner groove distortion you have because the grooves have to run closer to the label. But I have an EQ and a volume knob 
that helps compensate for any records that are too quiet, too loud, too much top end, too much bottom end. And I am not afraid to use them, but that's a matter of taste. Everyone's mileage will vary on that. Do I notice that they're mixed differently? Yeah, they are. But again, I don't see that as a con. And so the last thing I want to mention as a potential con is that the liner notes, oftentimes very copious liner notes, are written in Japanese. So if you don't read Japanese, you won't be able to read these. But here's how you can fix that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a bummer if you don't read Japanese, but we have the technology and you could literally, if you wanted to, transcribe them, print them out, slip them in the sleeve or the jacket if you want to, um, or even just read through them once from your phone. Okay, so what about the pros? There are many factors that determine how a record will sound, including quality of the master tapes used, how the record was mastered, how the record was mixed, what kind of vinyl was used to press the records? Japanese records are usually pressed in smaller volume. So the Japanese weren't producing American music vinyl in the millions like we were in the US. Most Japanese records, probably more so in the 70s and 80s, were pressed using high quality virgin vinyl. This wasn't the case in the US where recycled vinyl was often used and probably still is, probably more now than ever. There's more demand now than there really is pressing plants and I'm sure in an effort to try to get these records out, not the greatest materials are being used, probably not the best quality control is being used, probably most of us can agree on that. And my personal opinion is that this helps contribute to snowflake pressings. For more on that, see my nightmare pressings video here. And according to my research for many years, Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, I know another controversy, but an American company known for their high quality audiophile pressings, contracted the pressing of their records to JVC in Japan because JVC had invented an exceptionally durable and quiet vinyl compound known as Super Vinyl that was unavailable anywhere else. And lastly, the Obi Strip. Need I say more? Look how cool that is. All right, so now that you know how Japanese vinyl differs from other vinyl and why you might want to add some Japanese pressings to your collection, let me show you some of the Japanese vinyl in my collection. And I stuck to all jazz here, just because most of the Japanese pressings that I have are jazz, but I think subscribers of the channel are probably coming to expect me to talk about jazz here, which I'm totally fine with. All right, so this isn't a review of these records or pressings, but I'll show you the catalog numbers on the screen while I go through this, and I'll share all the Discogs links in the description of this video. And I saved some bangers for the very end, so stick with this video if you can. All right, I'm gonna go through this kind of fast, or try to. First up, we got John Coltrane, A Love Supreme in Stereo from 1980, part of the Jazz Time Now series. This sounds really, really nice. Next up, Sonny Rollins, Way Out West in Stereo, 1974, part of the Contemporary Jazz 150 series. And this record sounds incredible. I actually listened to this very recently. It sounds super, super sweet. Third on the list is Miles Davis Quintet Roundabout Midnight in mono. Um, this one doesn't have a date. Maybe you know. If so, please add it to the comments. But again, a really, really nice record. No distortion on Miles' horn. Thank God. All right. Next, we got Sarah Vaughn, self-titled in mono from 1974. And by the way, when I give you the date, I'm giving you the pressing date. This record... <laughs> I'm going to do a jazz vocalist video very soon, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already so you don't miss all the new content as it comes out. This record is unbelievable. It sounds so good. Sarah Vaughn. Next up, we got Miles Davis again with Bags Groove in mono, pressed in 1984 from the Prestige Jazz Golden 50 series. Just sounds great. All right, we got Billy Holiday, Billy Holiday self-titled in mono, reissued in 1974, killer sounding record, especially considering how old these recordings are. Next up, we got a little Dizzy Gillespie at Newport in stereo, reissued in 1980, part of the Immortal Jazz on Verve series. This record sounds absolutely great. Did you guys notice my Verve shirt today? 
and not the only verb on this list by the way this is an amazing record and sounds just great on japanese vinyl and then we have its twin count basie at newport in mono from 1978 also part of the jazz on verb series sounds awesome this record elvin jones and richard davis love this record i consider this kind of a hidden gem heavy sounds in stereo reissued in 1979 part of the impulse modern jazz selection series awesome record sounds killer all right we got a little eric dolphy here eric dolphy and booker little memorial album recorded live at the five spot all these Eric Dolphy five spot records are just awesome. This one's in stereo, reissued in 1973 as part of the Jazz Right Now series. All right, that's 10. We're down to the final three of this Baker's Dozen. I told you I had some bangers. At least in my opinion, these are bangers. Some of these are difficult to get. This one is Sunny Side Up. This is such a great bop record with the titans of jazz, Sonny Stitt, Sonny Rollins, and Dizzy. It's one of my Desert Island records, and also on Verve. Sunny Side Up in mono from 1985, part of the Verve Best 50 series. Sounds awesome. I don't even wanna, I know people do this, but I'm, I don't wanna tell you what I paid for this. The reason I say that is because I'm telling you, you guys can find great deals out there. But anyway, Sunny Side Up, amazing record, and amazing pressing. Ho, ho, ho. Thad Jones, the magnificent Thad Jones. This is a tough one to get in any pressing right now. This one is mono from 1979. It's part of the Blue Note Masterpiece selection and it just sounds killer. And look at that cover, man. Just one of the best jazz album covers of all time, in my opinion. I love that. All right, last and certainly not least, this is my copy of out to Lunch by Eric Dolphy, in stereo, released in 1977, part of the Immortal Masterpiece selection. Sounds phenomenal. I love this record. I love this pressing. Just very happy to have this in the collection. For me, I think Japanese vinyl is one of the vinyl community's best kept secrets. I mean, not anymore. <laughs> but they sound awesome, usually with high quality mastering, quiet virgin vinyl. They look great. I don't think they're as cost prohibitive as their US pressing counterparts, as some would say, and sometimes they're even cheaper. Remember to bundle records up. If you're buying, if you live in the US, for example, and you're gonna buy a Japanese record, see if they have three or four or five records that you want. You're gonna save so much in shipping. And I'm telling you, I don't like to overpay for records. So that's the way I do it. And I just find there's such a great value for what you're getting. The shipping is lightning fast to the US, particularly if you live on the West Coast. Thanks for watching the video. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'm giving away that record right there, that John Coltrane two disc tone poet edition, phenomenal $50 value record. I'm giving it away to one lucky subscriber once I hit 1000. So if you like this content, there's way more where that came from. So please subscribe, like, comment. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.